Hi, my name is Dr. Harry Witchell, and this is a screencast to help you understand the concept of graded potentials and their purpose in the nervous system. The meaning of graded potentials and the reason that you need to understand them is central to how the central nervous system works, why it evolved, and in particular, why it evolved to have action potentials. In a sense, the graded potential is the alternative, the dark twin, if you like, of the action potential. Let's start with basic physics. Voltage is charge separation. They're effectively the same thing. In a solution of salt water, each sodium ion has a chloride ion next to it. The negative and positive charges cancel out. There is no net electric field. The voltage between any two points is zero. The voltage throughout the salt water remains at zero because any charge separation that happens in solution is immediately eliminated. If a single pair of a sodium and a chloride ion were separated, there would be an electric field. Nature abhors such charge separations. So, any charge separation in solution is immediately eliminated. The way that happens is there is a resulting electric field from the charges being separated. This newly created electric field would immediately draw the ions together, which would lead to the disappearance of the electric field. So the reason there is no electric field is that any electric field is immediately eliminated. However, across a selective membrane such as the plasma membrane, charge can separate. For example, when a sodium channel opens, it results in sodium ions crossing the membrane, which creates an electric field. But chloride cannot penetrate the membrane. Now there is an electric field across the membrane because there is a positive charge that is not accompanied by a negative charge right next to it. How did this happen? In this example, only one sodium ion moved, and this movement of only one sodium ion did not change the sodium concentration on either side of the membrane, because it's only one sodium ion. Yet, voltage inside the membrane is now positive. This is a rule of thumb. It takes the movement of only a small number of ions across the membrane to change the voltage. But to change the concentration gradient, it would require the movement of a huge number of ions. Now what happens to the voltage further along the membrane? The net electric field is also transmitted along the length of the membrane electrotonically. Electrotonic transmission of any electric field is very rapid, but the field strength diminishes greatly over distance. The amount the field weakens depends on the resistance along the length of the axon fluid. Electrotonic conduction is the passive spread of current in tissues by electrical conduction, which happens via attraction of opposite charges and reflection of like-charged ions within the cell. In this example of a neuron, there are regions of myelin that have high resistance and thus shield the electric field from going across the membrane. Meanwhile, the cytoplasm has low resistance that almost instantly transmits the electric field, although the strength of the field diminishes as it travels further. In this example, the charges on both sides of the neuron membrane are balanced, so there are no net electric fields. Now, if a brief channel opening allows ions to flow, the sodium channel, the sodium channel open, the chemical gradient would cause the sodium to travel into the cell. In this case, we show one sodium going through. This now means that there is an unbalanced positive charge inside the cell, and there is an unbalanced negative charge outside the cell. The membrane at this left node is now depolarized. The extra positive charge inside the cell will attract negative charges from other parts of the intracellular space, and these will flow toward the extra positive charge. A similar chain of events happens in the extracellular space, where the unbalanced negative charge will attract positive charges from the middle node. Now the membrane is depolarized in the middle node. There is an unbalanced positive charge inside the cell and an unbalanced negative charge outside. As a result, this attracts charges from the right-hand node toward the middle, and now the depolarization has traveled to the right-hand node. Now all this may seem a little too easy. If nature abhors unbalanced charge, why would it drag the charges leftward to balance one set of charges if the result was that it created another set of unbalanced charges to the right? Plainly, one negative charge from further away will not abandon its position and move all the way to the left, but it will move a little bit to the left toward the positive charge, and that negative charge will repel negative charges where it arrives, so another negative charge will move further to the left, 
and the negative charges will all move slightly to the left like a domino effect. If the sodium channel conducted quite a number of positive charges inward, this process would result in all the cytosolic negative charges moving slightly left over and over again, so the net resulting current would be as if the negative charge was jumping from the nodes at the right to the nodes at the left. The net current moving in this way is the basis of saltatory conduction, summation, and of graded potentials. Keep in mind that each of these current jumps is decreased by a resistance because voltage becomes smaller as the electric field encounters finite resistance. In a neuron, large diameter leads to lower resistance, which leads to faster conduction, as we shall see. Electrotonic transmission of an electric field is very rapid, but the field strength diminishes greatly over distance. The amount the field weakens depends on the resistance along the length of the axon's fluid. If the resistance going along the intracellular fluid was zero, so that the conductance was much like what would happen in a copper wire, the voltage would all be the same all along the length of the membrane. But in a fluid, resistance is finite. Resistance is the tendency of a conductor to reduce the voltage drive of a current traveling along that conductor. Now, since copper has a very low resistance, voltage does not fall very much as it travels along the length of this copper wire. Now, water with only a little salt has a much higher resistance, so voltage decreases as it travels through the salt water. More salt will lower the resistance. So the transmembrane potential is decreased as it travels along the length of the axon, which is filled with salt water. This is a classic example of what a graded potential is. It is the voltage downstream from another point in the membrane where there is already an electric field. This is one example of why it is called a graded potential because the voltage difference across the membrane has different levels, or gradations, depending on how much the voltage has been reduced by traveling along the path with resistance. The other classic example is that graded potentials are in receptor cells. So for example, the more light that hits a rod or cone in your retina, the more voltage the receptor has changed. There are gradations in the transmembrane voltage. Compare that to neurons with action potentials. Action potentials are all or none. The point of graded potentials is that they are everywhere. They are the natural state of the universe. Graded potentials are not just in receptor cells. They happen along the length of a paramecium, along a liver cell, along your skin. Graded potentials even happen along the length of your shoe. But your shoe has a very high resistance, so the voltage differences differ disappear over macroscopic distances because there is effectively no voltage connection. Thus, the graded potential goes to zero. So, how could the nervous system conduct electrical signals over long distances, especially given that graded potentials are always diminishing over distance? By using the action potential. The action potential is the great achievement in the evolution of the nervous system. The nervous system is specialized for conduction over long distances thanks to the conduction of the action potential. The only problem with the action potential is that it is slow compared to electrotonic transmission of an electric field. However, the action potential has an advantage in that the signal is amplified as it goes along. Amplification means that there is no degraded signal. The signal is the same everywhere, even though there is a finite resistance. The idea behind saltatory conduction is that a graded potential traveling over a short distance can still reach threshold for an action potential. This starts a new action potential. So all along the length of the axon's membrane, there is a cycle. A graded potential travels electrotonically along the axon from one node to the next, which leads to a new action potential at the next node. That action potential creates a graded potential that travels electrotonically even further along the axon to the third node, which leads to a new action potential at the third node, and so on. The way that myelin speeds up axonal conduction is by improving how graded potentials travel along the axon. This is called saltatory conduction. Saltatory conduction is often shown in textbooks as if the action potential was jumping from one node to the next. The action potential doesn't just jump and jump and jump. In saltatory conduction, the signal jumps electrotonically and then waits for the action potential for, to fire at the new node. And then it jumps electrotonically to the next node and waits for the action potential to fire there. 
If you made the distance between the nodes longer and longer, it would make the transmission faster and faster, except that the longer the distance between the nodes, the more likely it is that the electrotonic or graded potential will diminish to the point where it never reaches threshold at the next node of Ranvier, at which point the signal would stop and go no further down the axon. So saltatory conduction is a compromise between having the speed of electrotonic transmission, that is the graded potential, while being able to benefit from the long distances that the amplification of the action potential allows. Myelin increases both the speed and the signal fidelity of voltage changes over short hops by increasing transmembrane resistance. Without myelin, the current and voltage is lost across the membrane. Current loss across the membrane has the effect that less of the voltage signal is electrotonically transmitted along the length of the axon. This makes it less likely and more time consuming for the membrane further along the axon to reach the threshold to trigger a new action potential. Despite this disadvantage, some nervous cells only use the graded potential. As we said before, a classic example is the set of receptor cells in the eye, that is the rods and cones. Because these cells are not specialized for conduction, they're specialized for precise detection of how much light there is. It might be clearer to use an analogy of digital versus analog recording. Digital recording has lasting fidelity, just like action potentials, but analog recording, like graded potentials, has a more precise signals, which is why in vinyl records that you hear a warmer sound quality which is one reason why some DJs prefer to use old school phonographs. Another place where graded potentials occur is in the synapse. The postsynaptic cell responds to neurotransmitter via a localized graded potential. It might cause an action potential, but it is more likely to influence all the other signals hitting that cell. The cell then integrates the information from many neurons. This is the point of EPSPs excitatory postsynaptic potentials and IPSPs, inhibitory postsynaptic potentials. EPSPs and IPSPs are graded potentials. This is important in the way that psychotropic drugs act. SSRIs such as Prozac don't cause the postsynaptic cell to fire or not fire. SSRIs modulate the voltage of the postsynaptic cell by adding local graded potentials. This changes how the postsynaptic cell responds to other stimuli. When a patient starts a prescription of SSRIs, they do not instantly feel constant, inappropriate, joyous emotions pouring out of them. They just withstand other stresses better. Compare that to what happens with LSD. In one hour, massive hallucinations result. That's because LSD directly increases serotonergic and other signaling, while SSRIs increase the net effects of extant signals by preventing the degradation of previously released signaling molecules. This modulation by SSRIs is essentially caused by graded potentials being maintained at the synapse. So, what you have learned from this screencast. The universe is filled with graded potentials. The nervous system evolved to conduct information in the form of voltage. This is the reason the action potential was favored by evolution of the nervous system. Conduction over long distances requires amplification. Graded potentials degrade over distance. The action potential is conducted fastest by saltatory conduction. That is, it uses the electrotonic conduction, which is a process where a graded potential travels very quickly downstream to a point where it can create a new action potential, which then reamplifies the signal. Then the signal is electrotonically transmitted further as another graded potential to the next point where an action potential can occur. In answer to the question of where graded potentials are biologically important, some cells of the nervous system use only graded potentials, for example, receptor cells in the retina. And synapses also use graded potentials to integrate information arriving from multiple inputs. Thank you for listening.